an analysis of probability always starts with an experiment, either a real one or a theoretical one. So all the possible outcomes of that experiment we call elementary outcomes, and we assign each of those a probability. For example, let's say that we're following two traits in Mendel's Garden of Peas, wrinkled or round seeds and green or yellow seeds. So round is dominant over wrinkled. We'll give these um, the symbols big W and little w, so round and wrinkled. And let's also follow whether the seeds of the plants are green or yellow. And in this case, yellow is dominant over green. So we'll say big G is yellow and little g is green. So now let's cross a heterozygote for both of these genes with itself. This is the experiment, right? So big W, little w, big G, little g, crossed by big W, little w, big G, little g. And when we do this cross, the elementary outcomes are as follows. Big W, big W, big G, big G, big W, big W, big G, little g, big W, big W, little g, little g, big W, little w, big G, big G, big W, little w, big G, little g, big W, little w, little g, little g, little w, little w, big G, big G, little w, little w, big G, little g, and little w, little w, little g, little g. Lots and lots of them. And so again, we call all of these possible outcomes of this experiment elementary outcomes. And next, we can assign a probability to each of these, and we'll look at we'll look shortly at how these probabilities are determined. For the uh, for now, go ahead and take my word for it that those probabilities are one sixteenth, one eighth, one sixteenth, one eighth, one quarter, one eighth, and one sixteenth, one eighth, one sixteenth. Two notes about these probabilities. First, they're all in the range from 0 to 1, inclusive, so a probability of an event could be 0 or 1. And the second thing that's important about them is they all sum to 1. We call this enumeration of elementary outcomes and their probabilities the sample space. And so now that we have a sample space defined, we can start asking questions like, what is the probability that a random seed from this cross will be green? So the probability that it will be green is the sum of all of the probabilities of the elementary outcomes where that is the case. And so that is this one right here, this one right here, and this one right here. And so all of those sum up to one quarter. There's a one quarter, a 25% probability that a seed will be green. And note that we're looking at several elementary outcomes here. And we call this set of elementary outcomes an event. So let's go ahead and define event A as the seed is green. And the probability of that event is one quarter, right? It's the sum of these elementary probabilities. And when we define an event like this, we also define its complement, right? The, the, the event that is not this event. And so we generally write that 
a prime. And so we'll say, or A's complement, this is, is the event that the seed is not green. And the probability of A prime is always one minus the probability of A. And so in this case, it's three quarters. And so now that we're starting to think about these elementary outcomes in terms of events and their probabilities, we, also, we um, often want to reason about the probabilities of multiple events. And so to see how this works, let's go ahead and define a second event called B. And we'll make B event that the seed is wrinkled. Similarly, we can look at our list of elementary outcomes and we can find the outcomes where that is the case. And so that's, that's these three right here. One, two, three. And so the probability of B is the sum of the probabilities of all of these elementary events, which again is one quarter, and the probability of B's complement, right? B's complement is the seed is not wrinkled, is all of the other ones, right? The sum of all of the other probabilities, and so that is three quarters. First, so, so let's, start, let's start asking questions about multiple events at the same time. And so first let's ask, what is the probability that a seed is wrinkled and green? Let me go ahead and write that out. We call this the intersection of events A and B. It consists of the elementary outcomes that are in both event A and event B, and we write it either AB or sometimes we write it, make sure I get this correct, A cap B, right? This is the intersection. And, and again, the intersection is all of the elementary, uh, all of the elementary outcomes that are in, in A and in B. And in this case, there's only one of them, right? So the probability of the intersection between A and B is just the probability of this elementary outcome is 1 16th. Second, if this is the probability that a seed is wrinkled and green, we can ask what is the probability that a seed is wrinkled or green? If we call this the intersection of these events, then this wrinkled or green is called the union. And the union of events A and B is written A plus B or occasionally A cup B. And again, this is the union of those two events. And the union includes all of the elementary outcomes in either event A or in event B. And so here, it's 1 16th plus 1 8th plus 1 16th plus 1 8th plus 1 16th. We don't include this twice. We only include this once. And so the probability of A and B is... I'm sorry, not A and B, A or B, wrinkled or green. The probability of the union of those two events is 7 sixteenths. I will note that if you know the probability, just the probability of A and the probability of B, the probability of their union is the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of the intersection. Again, because this is the intersection and we only want to include it once, 
not twice. So here, like this is kind of a kind of a, a quick overview of some of the important ways that we think about probabilities and uh, how probabilities go together. But before we move on into genes and their segregation, I want to take one more look at this intersection. Did you note how if the probability of A is a quarter and the probability of B is one quarter, then the probability of AB is one sixteenth? Did you note how this is actually the probability of A times the probability of B? This is true only if events A and B are independent. Very important. The probability of the intersection of two events is the product of the probabilities of each event individually only if those events are independent. And independent means that knowing the outcome of one doesn't tell you anything about the outcome of the other. And actually, there are many events in genetics, segregation and transmission of alleles of unlinked genes, for example, that are independent. So we will get to use this on a pretty regular basis. However, there are also situations where the events are linked together, and we're actually going to return to this kind of probability, which is called conditional probability, at the end of the chapter. For now, though, let's turn our attention back to Mendel and his piece.